A recurring element which can be found in nearly all of Tarantino's films is some sort of mysterious plot point or situation which is ultimately left unsolved by the film's conclusion. Examples include whether or not Colonel Hans Lander recognizes Shoshana as he interrogates her in a French cafe in Inglorious Bastards. Il y avait une autre chose que je voulais vous demander. Mais maintenant, sur ma vie, impossible de m'en souvenir. Or whether or not Chris Mannix was actually appointed the new sheriff of Red Rock in The Hateful Eight. You got business in Red Rock? Yes, I do. What? I'm the new sheriff. Or whether or not Cliff Booth's harpoon accident, which resulted in his wife's death, was really an accident in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And of course, the age-old question of what's in the briefcase in Pulp Fiction. We happy? Vincent! We happy? Yeah, we happy. Though these little story intrigues rarely have any importance in the overall plot of these films, they do add an amusing detail for audiences to puzzle over and talk about after the credits have rolled. But there is one unanswered, lingering question which I find the most interesting and consequential to the narrative of any of his films. This appears at the end of his 1997 film, Jackie Brown. In this final scene, Max Cherry, the bail bondsman who has been head over heels for Jackie since the first moment they met when he bailed her out of jail, is offered to go on a vacation to Spain with her after they both made off with the money and finally kissed, and he declines. Earlier in the film, he had mentioned that he was getting sick of the bail bonds business and was looking towards retiring soon, so it couldn't have been out of an obligation to his work. He'd also more than once put his life in serious jeopardy when helping her steal the half million dollars from the intimidating Ordell Roby, so he definitely cared about her a great deal. They had both finally made it out safe on the other end after risking being caught by the ATF and weapons dealers and crazy ex-cons. Why wouldn't Max want to celebrate and run off with the woman of his dreams to Europe with a half million dollar budget? There are a few theories as to why he stays behind, which I will discuss here. I won't be ranking these or giving my opinion on which I think is right. Rather, it's up to you to decide what you believe, just as Tarantino intended. And if your theory isn't given here, then perhaps it's likely just as valid as any of the others. It's simply one's own interpretation. The first theory is that Max Cherry was all talk, and when push came to shove and the opportunity arose for him to get exactly what he wanted, he chose to stay rather than pursue that. Now this could be due to the fact that he just wanted to do what's comfortable and stick with the same old same old. Or it could be that he was just scared of Jackie in the end. After he'd seen how she lied and tricked and manipulated much more powerful men over much more serious matters, he just wasn't sure he could trust her. He even says as much when Jackie asks him. But then again, if he really did care for her that much, why shouldn't he? What's she stand to gain from tricking him? Is she really never lied to him as she says? And I never lied to you. I know that. We're partners. Then what's there for him to be scared of? It may be as simple as that they're just from two different worlds. Max's morals were loose enough to bail out criminals. Whatever you're into, you seem to be getting away with it, so uh, more power to you. But he wasn't a criminal himself. And maybe he knew deep down he couldn't be with a woman who could plot someone's death as she had. Add to that note the fact that she drove up in this dead man's car. That's our Dells. They confiscated everything else. Registration was in the glove box. Keys went underneath the seat. Hey. <laughs> What's the matter? Haven't you ever brought somebody's car before? Not after they're dead. Ultimately, he looks into his future and realizes that it's safer for him and his retirement to stay rather than leave. Another theory is that Max does end up going with her, but not right away. He realizes shortly after she drives off what a huge mistake he's made, but there's still a chance he went after her. When Max asks the caller on the phone to ring him up again in 30 minutes, Could I excuse myself? Would you call me back in about half an hour? Yes, thank you. Who's to say he didn't call Jackie or try to stop her? 
Perhaps even, she turned around to try to twist his arm just a little bit more. In the final shot, Jackie is driving, but the framing is so tight and close that you can't see if there's anyone in the passenger seat. Or maybe their reunion happens a bit later, when he's received the postcard Jackie had said she would send him. I'll send you a postcard. He got the address and flew out to meet her in Madrid. It's possible that he may have just wanted to wait first to settle his affairs, or to make sure Jackie still cared for him enough to send him that postcard. Even if she never does mail that postcard, Max could regret his decision so much that he has Winston track her down and surprises her with his unexpected but welcome arrival. Well, how'd you know where he was? I found him. What do you mean you found him? That's my job. They're both lonely characters. Neither one of them have somebody. And you can have all the money in the world, but if you don't have a special somebody to share things with, it's still not a great life. Another interpretation is that Jackie wasn't really inviting him to Spain that that was just her style. She's a flirtatious and friendly person and if she really wanted him to go to Spain with her, she would have brought it up beforehand. She just dropped it on him at the last second knowing he'd say no. It was just a romantic way of saying goodbye and Max was smart enough to know that. Either way, we will never know what happens, whether or not Jackie and Max see one another again or if this is the last moment they share before closing a chapter. Whether Jackie really loved him or if she was just using him like everyone else. The point is the ambiguity, as with all the other instances of this element being used in other Tarantino stories. He ends the romantic arc of the two characters on an unsatisfactory note, possibly because giving them a happy ending would have been too cliche or tidy, or that the alternative wasn't a realistic enough depiction of what that relationship would be like in the real world. Without going the cheap and obvious route, Tarantino shows a mature sensibility towards these middle-aged characters who have lived long enough to be skeptical, but at the same time know that there's less and less time left to take chances and snatch up good opportunities when they're presented. This is a fittingly adult final note for his most adult film to date. In the end, however you interpret the ending, there's no denying that it's a damn good one at that. I was the first brother of five Doing whatever I had to do to survive I'm not saying what I did was all right Trying to break out of the ghetto was a day-to-day -day fight